I think it's going to be important for all of us to do some soul searching. Um, you know, there have been talk about should we convene a conversation on race. Uh, I haven't seen that be particularly productive when you know, politicians try to organize conversations. They end up being stilted and politicized and uh, folks uh, are locked into the positions they already have. Uh, to whom was he speaking today and was it effective? I thought it was a political speech addressed to his constituency on the left which I thought was unfortunate, even though it sounded like a philosophical speech addressed to the whole nation. Look, I have gave him and Holder credit all week for trying to de-racialize the issue. And what Obama did, I think, unfortunately today, is to re-racialize it. The first statement he issued after the verdict on Saturday, I think it was, was to talk about the juries. Uh, we have to honor what the jury had decided. And then he spoke about, you know, helping our communities, thinking about our neighbors and gun control. But it wasn't about race. And as we know from the trial, race was not an issue in the trial. The prosecution didn't speak of race. The jury said it wasn't an issue. Well, the FBI investigation didn't find any hint of racism in Zimmerman. But Obama re-injected it. Now, to give him the benefit of the doubt, and I'm not sure why I still do, three days in a row I probably ought to consult a physician by now. I think the main th uh, the message of the speech was what he buried, which was they are not going to continue, they're not going to pursue a federal prosecution. He knows, Holder knows, there is no case for a, a hate crime. But he buried it. It was a throwaway line. And the rest, all the racial stuff and the sympathy he expressed for all those who were upset, I think was the rhetorical fog or, if you like, a compensation for the fact that they are not going to get the demand that you're going to hear in the demonstrations tomorrow for a f federal uh, charge against Zimmerman. So I think it was a balancing act as a way to mitigate the, the fact that they are not going to pursue an unwinnable prosecution of Zimmerman. Uh, Julie, you were in the My main message is, is uh, to the parents of uh, Trayvon Martin. You know, if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. And, um, you know, I think they are right to expect that all of us as Americans uh, are going to take this with the seriousness it deserves and that we're going to get to the bottom of exactly what happened. When uh, Trayvon Martin was first shot, uh, I said that this could have been my son. Uh, another way of saying that is, uh, Trayvon Martin could have been me uh, 35 years ago. It is clear from those comments that today he was trying to educate and enlighten. Did he do that? I disagree. I think it was a mistake what he said before the trial at the time of the event when he said he would have looked like me, implying it's about skin color and race. But it was understandable because given the history of the country and the facts were unclear, it could be assumed that it might have been a racial killing. After the trial, when we know there was no element of that by claim by any side in the trial, so we knew as a fact it was not about race, he now returns and again says it's about race. I disagree with Steve. I don't think that's enlightening. I think he didn't have to come out there and say anything. He issued a statement. Holders talked about this. But I think he legitimized the protests tomorrow, which are all going to be assuming it was about race, when in fact he should have said the facts are it was not. We have racial issues in the country, but it's not what the case here was about. To the point of timing. Each week we ask you to vote in on our Friday lightning round for your favorite topic of the week. And this week you chose the IRS probe and what is next there. You said one group should be approved for tax exempt status and one should be disapproved and get further information for the data. Is that correct? That's correct. And they gave them to someone who had no experience dealing with this. And they also took them away from you after, according to your testimony, you met with the chief counsel's office. Is that correct? That's correct. So this is the name that we now know. William Wilkins, chief counsel, head lawyer for the IRS here in Washington. They call it lightning <laughs> for a reason, Charles. Right. And where it goes, it, it left Cincinnati. It arrived in D.C. with these hearings. And with this Wilkins uh, involvement, it now arrives for the first time at a political level 
It isn't a civil servant. It's a guy who's appointed by the president, and I think it gets hot right now as All a right. result of Big that. news out of Detroit, as you well know. Apparently, the vice president was asked earlier today what the administration can do to help the Motor City. This is how he answered that. Can we help Detroit? We are now going through exactly in detail what uh, we had a meeting yesterday, just getting a brief on the status. Uh, the question is, uh, um, we don't know at this point. That, that would be an about face, would it not, if they Absolutely. continue on course? But that, that, that was a classic answer that the that the Biden gave. Uh, he said essentially, we have no idea. But it took him a paragraph. Uh, he well, would, he was part of the lightning he, he round, wasn't he, got, Steve? Exactly. You wouldn't have had him on the lightning round. Next topic and the final topic. There was a there was a shocking story to many people in Boston uh, this past week when Rolling Stone put uh, Joe Karzainayev in its cover. And overnight last night, we learned that a Massachusetts sergeant, a photographer who was taking pictures of the arrest and apprehension of Zarnayev on that Friday night in Watertown really should be portrayed this way. That was the point he was making. He's been put on leave, at least for a day. There will be an internal investigation. Charles? I put the cop on the cover of a magazine instead of a terrorist. I mean, I think it isn't only a mistake to put uh, the Chennai of the kid on the, on the cover. It glamorizes him. It gives him this kind of uh, halo of a lead singer for the doors. But the worst than that, it's kind of the Che chic, you know, the, the angelic, the cherubic face of a killer. Che loved to kill. He killed a lot of opponents uh, gleefully of the, the Castro regime. You know, and, and kids now wear them on their t-shirt. Uh, and that's exactly what this cover was about. Had it been for an ideological, or if these people were hard left, I'd, I'm, you know, I'd, I'd have a lot l less of an argument than it was done for pure cash mm. and publicity. And it could have been a business decision. But, but you have seen what, I mean, for This has been a Sunfish production.